Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Zoe Lyons and Rob Beckett, Ed Byrne, Hugh Dennis and Milton Jones. <laughs> we start with a round called, if this is the answer, what is the question on the board of six categories? Zoe, which category would you like? I'm going to go for politics, please. Delightful. Politics is the category. The answer is... 2%. What is the question? Uh, is the question, how much of his speeches does Ed Miliband usually remember at conference? <laughs> <laughs> is it how much of Greg Wallace can dance? <laughs> <laughs> is it how many dragons have a tattoo of a girl? <laughs> <laughs> is it, at what percentage of battery life on your phone does watching a porn film become a race against time? <laughs> <laughs> is it what is the top mark Joey Essex ever got at school? <laughs> is it how many Americans think they should invade Ebola? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Is it how much DNA does Prince Harry share with Prince William? <laughs> Some things become newly outrageous uh, yeah. for the, the mock the week crowd. <laughs> We're here so long, we've seen that one go in and out of big shock. Days. Clearly, I have misjudged the mood of conference. Yeah. <laughs> is it what percentage of Chris de Berg is under the surface? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is quite accurate. How many people who own it have actually listened to the new U2 album? <laughs> Is it the percentage chance of Jeremy Clarkson becoming the Prime Minister of Argentina? <laughs> well, maybe if I can, if I can have is a correct, okay? accurate is it answer. How much effort am I prepared to put into this answer? <laughs> <laughs> this is to do with the, the, the latest polls, political polls, and it, apparently the Tories are now 2% ahead. Absolutely right. Thank you very much, Louise. Thank you very much. That's right. The question I was looking for was, by what percentage were the Conservatives leading Labour, according to polls this week? This is where the recent polls have put the Conservatives two points ahead of Labour. This is the first time the party has been in the lead since March 2012. Who are they asking? I've never been asked. Who are they asking to get these results? Or just go, oh, should we ask those people by the closed-down coal mine? Now, leave them. Oh, mm. sorry to interrupt your fox son. Who do you reckon you're going to vote for? <laughs> he had a good week, though, hasn't he, David Cameron? His approval ratings are up. To minus four percent. Yes. <laughs> Nick Clegg on minus sixty-five. I am loving those minus numbers. It makes it look like even imaginary people think they're shit as well. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, the Prime Minister is out of touch with the British people. But that's Gordon Brown for you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine though a minus sixty-five percent improvement? That means Nick Clegg must sit around dreaming of a time when no one likes him. <laughs> <laughs> He's aiming for just nobody. <laughs> if, if they're two points ahead, why don't they just do the election now? Because they could do it online, they could do it on Tinder, couldn't they? Just like, s <laughs> swipe left for Labour, <laughs> swipe right for... Cause, uh, double right for UKIP. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Are you on Tinder, by the way? I'm not on Tinder, no, I've got, I've got a girlfriend. Yeah. I've got to actually recommend, uh, there's a comedian's version of it, called Grinder, uh, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> got, got a really nice guy who said, you yeah. will put you on Grinder, and you can meet other comedians and audience members of comedy. Yeah. Yeah. How did you get on with it, that? Really well, really yeah. friendly guys, <laughs> actually, yeah. <laughs> right. Do you mean Grinder? Yes, that's the joke. Like, that is, oh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> why, um, why do you think that Labour support is declining? Because they've, they've got these um, new policies, like mansion tax, which is sort of ridiculous. Why is it sort of ridiculous? Even the Queen is going to have to pay it, apparently. Really? She could justifiably say, I don't live in a mansion. I live in a palace. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, but the other thing that, that put the Tories ahead 
uh, is um, David Cameron came out with a warning, which was a vote for UKIP. Uh, he said, go to bed with Nigel Farage, wake up with Ed Miliband. <laughs> which, there are freaks out there for whom that is the perfect evening. <laughs> <laughs> If he simply said, go to bed with Nigel Farage, wake up with Nigel Farage, that would have been a sufficient threat for me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not to go to bed with Nigel and Farage. If, he, if his wife... Can to... you imagine turning over those teeth, that big Nigel Farage grin in the morning? <laughs> Can I make you tea? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not working, though, is it, all this? Everyone hates all the leaders. So, no one, I reckon democracy has had a go. Why don't we try a dictator? <laughs> <laughs> get, like, get, don't get me wrong, we'll vote in a nice one. And just get them to do it and just see how it goes. It's a bit like Korea, but nicer Can with better I haircuts. Say, I don't think you get... <laughs> I don't think you get to vote in a dictator. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, think that's normally the, the, the harsh, harsh bit of it. That is, but that's maybe I could do my own one where you have a dictator, but you vote it in. That's democracy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> vote for me and you'll never have to vote again. It's a slogan of sorts, oh, isn't it? <laughs> Can we go back to the uh, actual <laughs> legitimate political parties who are operating within the democracy? Yeah. I'll say, we say this, by the way, on a very democratic night. Uh, this is the <laughs> second time in a few weeks that we have been on at 10 o'clock on a Thursday as the polls have closed and the nation is agog. I remember about this time, about two, three weeks ago, where we're just choosing our whiskey to settle in to watch the Scottish referendum elections. I know it'll be the same for many of you <laughs> sitting at home going, oh, an exciting night of watching the results of the Clacton by-election. Uh, <laughs> Tumbling in tonight. Why would that be historic? Uh, because it might be the first time UKIP have uh, an MP. Yes. There's uh, Carswell, who's the UKIP candidate. Uh, he's the one on the right, uh, rather than the one in the shop staring out. Uh, <laughs> Despicable me. That seems like a, that's the kind of, exactly the kind of person UKIP is trying to remove from kind of <laughs> communities like Clacton. Is it, is it one of your minions? Is that who it is? Right, shut up. They're not my minions. <laughs> They're not my minions. Even, to be fair, though, they are very hard workers. They are very hard workers. Yeah. That's why I employed them from all my plans. <laughs> no! <laughs> well, has uh, Miliband got criticised during the conference for something that Cameron did? Miliband got criticised because he forgot most of his speech, didn't he? Most, most of his speech. Well, he didn't he, stand he, walking he, around he, going, he made... there was something... <laughs> <laughs> oh, um... well, one was he forgot chunks of his speech, yes. but his speech was still an hour long. Now, I watched that speech. He should have forgotten more. That was my opinion. <laughs> They're all making mistakes, aren't they? He forgot stuff in his speech, and the Lib Dems put stuff in their speeches, which you kind of think, that's not really going to help. So they have just... One of their policies is to legalise brothels, isn't it? The Lib Dems. They're going to have shiny new brothels all over the place with a queuing system that goes, prostitute number one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's like desperate, isn't it? Like, going, oh, what should we do? No one likes us. Too what? <laughs> Legalised brothels. Oh, what's going to be next? Like, you can smoke in pubs, drinking's not bad for you, and cocaine Fridays. Should we do that? Can <laughs> <laughs> you vote for me then? Until recently, I thought Nick Leg was something you did to Oscar Pistorius to stop him moving around. <laughs> In other news, what will rocket scientists attempt for the first time on the 12th of November? Is it to get a girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to... I knew that yeah. was going to hurt you, wasn't it? It could hurt me, actually, yeah, yeah it is. Cos you know some rocket scientists who've got girlfriends, yes, don't you? Yes, I do, and yeah. they're all happy people. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly <laughs> turned into step-tones on <laughs> <laughs> oh, I trust the telly face is slipping now. Is <laughs> that <laughs> so one of the minions is kicking off? Yeah. <laughs> Keep them in check, Dara. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do they know the actual Is correct... This, uh, they're trying to um, chuck a robot on a comet. <laughs> they're frighteningly they? almost exactly what they are trying to do. There yeah. are people who've devoted their life to this, who've just gone, you know, we put it like that, it doesn't sound like much, does it? <laughs> <laughs> They're dropping a small robot onto a comet as it travels at some ridiculous speed. Uh, it is the... Uh, it's an astonishing thing. And it's basically it the is, plot yeah. of Armageddon, it, except it, the that, comet's that, not coming anywhere near us. No. <laughs> you know, it's an amazing feat of engineering. It's incredible. You know, landing a small... Getting a small craft to land on a comet 500 million miles away, bang on time. I mean, on this Earth, southwest trains often <laughs> can't get a driver <laughs> on a train. I mean, it, it's even more impressive because, as I said, they're, they're dropping a robot onto a comet, and people go, oh, so what? It's the robot from Confused.com. That irritating... <laughs> 
one that goes around with the check oh, going, hello, him. Terry, I have kids at car. <laughs> and I think that is a, a positive step for humanity. Uh, it's yeah. it's going to be very, very confused when it finds itself on a comet. <laughs> Chucking robots and satellites and stuff. Like, no, I'm thinking about the robots. I've seen Wally -E and it's a sad place. Can <laughs> <laughs> the robot come back or is that it? No, that's it for the robot. Oh, oh. fuck. Oh. No, I don't like that. <laughs> Are you pro are you probably driven your microwave oven to a to a dump at some stage? Did you cry? Did you think, don't look, make it face away from me as I drive away? As I, as I tip my old washing machine, don't let it see me! Wait, don't let it see me as I drive away! Why don't we just hope that that comet hits Earth and can come back? Well, well it'd be, be the last laugh for that yeah. robot if it suddenly yeah, exactly. came smashing back. Yeah. Is it? Oh, hello! It like oh, say wow. hello to me again! <laughs> You're dying confused? Not anymore! <laughs> you should be able to get it back, though, because normally when I go anywhere on a train, it's only a little bit more for a return, isn't it? <laughs> the robot was murdered outside my house once. <laughs> uh, well, there was, a, like, a chalk outline. Although, think about it, there might have been some kids playing hopscotch. <laughs> yeah, okay, at the end of that one, we've got a Rob, Zoe and Andy! <laughs> Now we play a round called Welcome to the Glib Dem Conference. <laughs> this game involves Zoe and Milton, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Let us spin the wheel. The first subject is food and drink. I love my food. Uh, I don't like the way women are still advertised to, like, certain foods are a naughty little treat. You know the ones? The chocolate's naughty, innit? In chocolate, naughty. Girls eating chocolate. Isn't that naughty? I think, no, it's not. Chocolate's not naughty. Eat it. Chocolate's only naughty if you've beaten somebody to death with a foot-long Toblerone. <laughs> I'm very competitive around food. Do you know what I mean by that? Does anybody else panic in a tapas situation? Do you know what <laughs> Any sort of shared plate environment, you find yourself sort of facially twitching, thinking, this isn't going to be enough, is it? <laughs> my, my nightmare scenario is if I go out for a meal and somebody at the end of the table just goes, should we order just lots of little things and share it? I'm like, should we just not? <laughs> I take it very seriously. I'll shovel it in, I really do. Don't, don't attempt to eat tapas with me, that's what I'm saying, cos you will lose. <laughs> you will lose and then you'll have a little cry when I make you split the bill, cos that will happen. <laughs> There's usually one girl at the end of the table just crying her eyes out, going, why am I paying 53 quid, though? I only had an olive. <laughs> I'm like, you had the same chances as me, bitch, you just didn't take them. <laughs> you were banging on about this and banging on about that, I was shoveling in the meatballs, I was getting my money's worth. <laughs> in fact, I managed to eat so much that night, I got up to leave, I put my glasses on, I thought, ooh, they feel tight. <laughs> oh, OK, that leaves us with Milton. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is home. My mum's a bit like the Beijing government. When you go round, you only see the nice China. I was smacked as a child, but you should see the state of the home I put my parents in. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in a home that was always full of exciting and exotic items from all over the world, because my parents were both baggage handlers. <laughs> These days, I live in a windmill. It's not a big windmill, and to be honest, golf balls keep coming through the front door. <laughs> The other day, I lost my doormat, uh, but fortunately, I keep a spare under a giant bunch of keys in the front garden. <laughs> <laughs> As a child, I had a medical condition that meant I had to eat soil three times a day in order to survive. Lucky my older brother told me about it, really. <laughs> <laughs> he later died of massive head injuries. <laughs> he was hit over the head with a Toblerone. Johnny Jones. What's there for Zoe Lyons? Zoe, come back. <laughs> and 
our next round is called Why Are These People in the News? So, why are these people in the news? Is it a middle-aged couple taking their young son for a walk? <laughs> I was just thinking, the years have not been kind to McFly. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon it's from our favourite TV show from America. It's two and a half men, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, or three men and a baby, and the baby hasn't been born yet. <laughs> <laughs> Is it low turnout for Twat Pride? <laughs> I don't care what the arrow says, we are walking on the left. <laughs> <laughs> does look like the evolution of man in reverse, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. I know the, what, what the actual story is. Please. Is it <laughs> yes. the Top Gear guys um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. chased out of Argentina? Yeah, of course it's. Thank you very so much, well, yeah. Rob Becker. Thank you very much. Yes, this is Top Gear presented with Jeremy Clarkson, James May and Richard Hammond, who would this week were chased out of Argentina by an angry mob. The mob claimed that the use of the number plate H982FKL was an inflammatory reference to the 1982 Falklands War. Now, they denied it. They denied it. But somehow, you still kind of feel that maybe it was. Uh, <laughs> Wouldn't you believe them more about it wasn't deliberate if the Stig hadn't been following them dressed as a penguin waving a picture of Margaret Thatcher? <laughs> I don't get why they've taken Top Gear to South America. Surely South America's got enough Top Gear as it is. <laughs> right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to do one proper one, haven't you, now and again? <laughs> if they're on television, shouldn't they have used one of those blurry number plates? <laughs> <laughs> it's so strange now, Top Gear. I remember it used to be about, like, cars. Now it's just like watching a documentary of your dad's mates having a breakdown. <laughs> I've got no interest in it because I've got no interest in cars. I, I did once buy a second-hand car and I can remember thinking I ought to look underneath the bonnet. And I looked underneath the bonnet and all I could think was, well, that looks full. <laughs> <laughs> that was the mark of a good car, yeah. how much they, how full it is. And the then bonnet. I thought, well, I'd better kick the tyres because I'd seen somebody mm, once do mm, that on the very film. Very important, very important, very <laughs> important, And yeah. they're surprisingly hard if you've never kicked a no. tyre before. <laughs> I find you often kick the second tyre a lot less energetically than you kick the first tyre. <laughs> and with a different foot. Uh, <laughs> I was once selling a second-hand car, the car I had to get rid of, and I thought, you always think that you're going to know less about cars than the bloke who's buying the car. And this bloke came, and uh, he, did, he did all the kicking of the tyres and everything. I thought, oh, God, he knows a lot, and he looks at all the bodywork. And then he got into the car, and he sat behind the driving seat, and he said, so... He was sitting there with me there. He said, so... Is this a left-hand or a right-hand drive? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you went, uh, cha -ching. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Personalised number plates are a good day. I bought my son one when he was born, but I did have to call him TGH-308F. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you buy a second-hand car, still, every now and again you will see they'll use that strap line, one lady owner. Have you seen that? That, that makes me crack me up. Who is this woman with I don't cars? know. I don't know who she... <laughs> The word lady as well, it just makes it sound like all of us women just drive around in bonnets with white gloves on with a freshly baked Battenberg steaming away beside us. <laughs> when I sell the car that I've got at the moment, I'll be able to use the strap line one lady owner and I'll tell you exactly what that means. It meant two months ago I managed to drive it for half an hour with the handbrake on. That's what it means. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You'll get, yeah, no handbraking can hold no. you. If you uh, down Ill, honey, you're an independent woman yeah. and no handbrake is gonna hold you. <laughs> <laughs> Push you. <laughs> I just convinced myself the car in front was having a little barbecue in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, what weird modern day inventions have been in the news this week? There's a bracelet they've invented that shocks you if you don't go to the gym when you said you were going to go to the gym. Yes, it's called the, it's called the power. It's, it's a wristband with a Pavlov wristband, and uh, and it gives you a motivational zap if you're if you haven't. It tells you GPS wise. It senses that you're in the gym or wherever you said you're going to be or at the meeting you're supposed to be at, and it gives you an electric shock if you've not. I don't think motivational and zap go together, really, do they? <laughs> it's basically a watch for masochists, isn't yes. it? Yes. You know, it's like oh oh, cool, I've been a bad boy. Oh. <laughs> I've quite been bad enough. Turn it up a bit more. <laughs> well, I wonder if I put this on my penis, how this is going to work. <laughs> you wouldn't need to. Just make sure you're not down to 2%. You'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> you're saying if you go to the wrong, wrong website, it'll give you a little shock so you don't go on the website. Yes, it But surely if that. you go, go on a website that you, you shouldn't really be on, you just delete history, don't you? 
I mean, the tricky bit is not deleting history. The tricky bit is then going on all the innocuous websites afterwards so as it doesn't look like you've deleted history. <laughs> <laughs> That's the tricky bit, isn't history it? History seems to be very empty in this computer, because yeah, I saw you on it all evening yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I never touched the deleted history. I've never asked that, though, yeah. <laughs> yes. Private browsing, Andy, private browsing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my my favourite member of the Army Corps, private browsing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Good afternoon, Private Browsing. Are you on duty again? I certainly am, Brad. <laughs> I shall be protecting you from any inappropriate sights. Uh, Private Browsing, performing for duty. Pants down. Private Browsing in here. <laughs> I shall protect your browsing while you shop for gifts for your wife. <laughs> that is apparently what Private Browsing was invented for. for. I, I love that. Oh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a Private Browsing on because I'm shopping for some gifts for my wife. Oh, really? You seem to be buying her pornography. Uh, <laughs> Are you sure this is the gift she particularly wants? <laughs> Papa Brothering! <laughs> Reporting for She TV. told me that her favourite film as a child was Double Fist and Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Private Brothers has never had to work under these conditions before. Uh, he's mainly used for shopping for gifts. <laughs> Private Browsing is retraining as an electrician. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you leave the army? Oh, the things I saw. <laughs> I saw some oh, things, I saw man. some things. I saw some things. You were there, army. man. <laughs> you were there. You were there. You didn't see what I saw. <laughs> First casualty of war, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Your private browsing, the first casualty of war is, uh, is innocence. <laughs> private browsing. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know why I'm here like Benny Hill. I don't know that. Private browsing. At your service. Oh, no, Benny Hill. Madam. Uh, Benny Hill would do. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would be like, you know, that, that um, uh, what's it, the paperclip that would appear? It seems to just... It looks like you're buying some pornography. <laughs> it's it's like an animated, small animated soldier came out and said, do you want to look at the porn? Private Browns are going to help you with that. <laughs> I'm losing myself here. It's the last record of a long summer, you mm. know? See, literally, the, I, I should, I've got to enjoy this, because in three days' time, I'll be going... Over the next 12 weeks, 20 candidates will be putting themselves yeah, 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 yeah. in sugar. Private Browning's going to get some visitors. <laughs> yeah, he's going to get some fucking hammering. Uh... <laughs> I think what? your penis is going to get some corporal punishment. <laughs> <laughs> there will be some major damage. <laughs> and general recklessness. Uh... <laughs> what do you, Trent and Colonel Abrams? Uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll, we'll bring it back. <laughs> Lost it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, Current Labour's is great, though. Uh, <laughs> none of you remember... Do you any of you may even remember Current Labour's? Anyway, he sang a song called Trapped. It was really good. I can't uh, get out. <laughs> like a fool, I'm in a cage. <laughs> I'm like a man in a cage. I'm so in love with you, love with you, love with you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did I even carry on with the show? Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you boys have got a shared past. We can only imagine that. <laughs> and the other, uh, the point is going to end here in the day. Now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics, and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is things you wouldn't hear at a party conference. <laughs> Willkommen, bienvenue, welcome to the UKIP party conference. <laughs> the leader's speech will be signed for the hard of hearing. Welcome to the UKIP party conference, and we've picked the most British place we could find. Welcome to Benidorm. <laughs> <laughs> and the good news is the polling data is in, and we are just ahead of others. <laughs> good.
good news if you're a small mother, we're going to raise the minimum wage. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding and welcome your new leader of the UKIP party. It's Mrs Chowdhury and her wife Paula. <laughs> Fellow members of UKIP, I think it is safe to say, judging by the amount of Eastern Europeans working in the kitchen here, that the soup we had for lunch was mainly piss. <laughs> As the Lib Dem leader, I say to you, go back to your constituencies and prepare your CVs. <laughs> Let me say quite categorically that this party is in favour of nuclear power. <laughs> Welcome, Liberal Democrats. The theme of our conference this year, why are we bothering? <laughs> Please come to the stage, your new Prime Minister, Mel B. <laughs> <laughs> and for the last time, for the last time, can I assure you that the NHS is safe in our blood-stained, money-grabbing hands. <laughs> OK, the next topic is unlikely things to hear on daytime TV. Good night. <laughs> well, welcome back to Dutch daytime TV. Next up, it's Hash in the Attic. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to The Chase. <laughs> <laughs> Long walk back, long walk back. <laughs> and I should have gone the other way. <laughs> good evening. <laughs> Sorry, good afternoon. Forgot how badly my career was going there. <laughs> Today on 60 Minute Makeover, David Dickinson gets re-sprayed with creosote again. <laughs> Thank you for watching this morning. Now put down the vodka, get dressed and go to work. <laughs> Today on Jeremy Kyle, Jaden will be asking Mustafa. No, I better not do that. <laughs> Today's episode of Jeremy Kyle has just been cancelled. <laughs> Today on Jeremy Kyle, Jaden will be asking Spencer why he won't read his research paper on neutron decay in lithium isotopes. <laughs> that was worth it. <laughs> Today on Jeremy Kyle, Jaden will be asking Spencer, where is Mustafa? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Who Do You Think You Are? How dare you? I don't care if you're a 70s DJ. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back. Well, we'll see if the police catch them before they actually hand over the drugs. Yep, it's deal or no deal. <laughs> Susan asked for a distressed look in her front room, so we told her her cat had been run over. <laughs> You're watching more for. Next up, I'm gonna go with come dine with me. <laughs> <laughs> the next program has been sponsored by Dignitas. Come die with me. <laughs> and next, I'm gonna be reading out some of your texts and emails. That's what you get for not locking your phone. Due to a misunderstanding, Flog It Saudi Arabia has been cancelled. <laughs> ah. 
Hello and welcome to Loose Women. Okay, give it a round of Ed Hugh Milton. <laughs> and that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parton, Zoe Lyons, and Rob Beckett. <laughs> Commiserations to Ed Byrne, Hugh Dennis, and Milton Jones. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Green. Good night. Tomorrow at 10, lovingly located here on BBC Two, the L series of QI continues with Johnny Vegas and Jason Manford joining Stephen Fry. Next night, it's Newsnight. <laughs>